Welcome back to another episode of the Fab Forums. Today, I work on this stainless exhaust for the twin turbo ride. Now this exhaust is a combination of stainless and then it changes to aluminum about, about the start of the transmission. So picture kind of like a long tube header. Where a long tube header would end is where the aluminum is going to start and run out the back. I've had a lot of people skeptical about the aluminum exhaust, but it's actually used pretty widely in the racing world. As a matter of fact, they'll do aluminum straight from the turbos. Um, the longevity may not last as long in the racing world, but the fact that I've got stainless running probably the first four feet and then turning into aluminum on the way out the back, I think it'll, uh, I think it'll last a lot longer than most would think. I've actually done this on some previous turbo setups with no issues. So. Now I have been fitting the stainless tubing on this car in previous episodes, but I didn't never I never finished welded. Everything was just kind of tacked together and pieced and tacked and pieced and tacked. This episode, I finish it. So we're gonna back purge, we're gonna weld up all the stainless, get it all put back in the car for the final time, or at least I hope it doesn't have to come back out. So the first thing I did is I just made sure that everything fit exactly the way that I wanted it to fit. It's all tacked up nice and clean, everything was, all the fitment was proper before I took it over to the table and finish welded it. When it comes to welding stainless, or any really exotic metal for that matter, you have to back purge it, which means you have to replace the ambient air on the inside of the tubing with argon to shield the back side of that weld. If you don't, if you don't basically back purge the inside of the tubing with, with argon, what will happen is when that stainless heats up and that weld is kind of penetrating through the back side, it will what they call sugar, so it'll kind of crystallize and create this really hard crusty crystallization. It is very prone to cracking and you don't want pieces of that chipping off or actually causing cracks within your tubing. So just like argon shields the weld on the outside of the tubing, you need argon on the inside of the tubing to do the exact same thing. Basically the way that you do that is you place a tube from your argon tank and back purge that tubing. Now to get the argon to stay in the tubing, you're gonna have to cap the ends on both, both ends of the tube. The way that I like to do that is just use a little bit of tin foil, fold it in half. This is a piece of aluminum, but it'll give you kind of the idea. I'll usually just cap one end, very similar to that. The other end kind of do the same thing, except for I'll wrap the tubing around the back purge tube itself and cap it off. And then basically just free flow some argon in there for a minute or two to kind of push out all the ambient air. And that's really why you don't need this to be perfectly sealed. As a matter of fact, sometimes I actually poke holes in the top just to kind of let the ambient air out. Uh, the argon is heavier than outside air, so the argon's gonna sink to the bottom, and as it fills, it'll just continually push out any ambient air that's left in there. And then you just let that argon flow while you're welding your tubing. And so you'll weld up all your joints, you weld up all your V-bands, you get all that stuff done. And if it's done properly, once you're done and you take it all apart, when you look on the inside of the tubing, the weld itself should look as nice and as clean as the outside of the tubing. So, I post a lot of pictures on Instagram of when I was welding these up. I had a lot of questions about the tin foil, so that kind of answers it for you. They're just uh, my makeshift plugs.
Once I had all the tubing TIG welded up, uh, I just cleaned it up a little bit with a Scotch Brite, and then those two lower sections of the exhaust, so the stainless portion of the exhaust is in two sections just so I can take it apart. You have the upper section, the upper down pipe that is directly connected to the turbo and goes down into the fender, and then there's a V-band, and then the second section goes from there back to the beginning of the transmission or the bell housing. So basically the entire exhaust on both sides is basically four pieces. You have the upper section and the lower section. The lower section on both sides I wanted to wrap in some kind of heat barrier uh, for several reasons. It's kind of close to the struts. I don't think it'd get hot enough to bother the struts but just in case go ahead and wrap all that stuff. And then on the passenger side there's a lot of electrical that actually runs pretty close to there. You have the starter wire, you have the main ground cable that comes to the back of the engine. Um, you have some other power wires. And so to keep it from kind of heating those up as well, and it's pretty tight on that side, and you want to heat the floor pan and all that stuff, I actually wrapped all of that as well. Once I had everything entirely wrapped and welded, it was ready to put back in the car. Just mounted all that stuff up under there for the last time, or at least I hope it was the last time. And I will finish the aluminum section of the exhaust. I've already got a couple pieces made. I kind of know how I want to do it. Not really concerned with it. I can actually drive the car the way that it is right now. Um, it can go to Foxtoberfest the way that it is right now. It can go to the new shop the way that it is right now. I really want to take my time on the rest of this and make sure that it's nice and tucked up under the car and looks good and everything's parallel and nice and neat. I just want to make sure that the aluminum section of this is super nice and neat. Um, you know, you don't want to see that thing kind of hanging out from underneath the car and whatnot uh, from the side. And essentially the turbos act as, as mufflers in a way. It kind of quietens it down a little bit. So for the time being, I can kind of move it around and drive it the way it is. I don't have to worry about any of those leaks that were in the tubing because of the cracks. Hopefully I can get a good air fuel ratio reading now, an accurate one, and uh, the car should run as it's supposed to. All right guys, that's it for this episode of the stainless welding on this car. I hope that kind of cleared up some of the things that you may have questions about as far as back purging goes. I know I had a lot of questions about the aluminum on Instagram, so there you go. That's kind of why I use the aluminum. There are probably better and more precise ways to back purge. I know a lot of guys use dual regulators. You have one regulator for your back purge. You have one regulator for your TIG torch. I didn't have mine set up like that. Uh, I rarely do stainless work and need to back purge and stuff. So a lot of those guys that do that on a regular basis have dual combo setups to try to save a little gas. I probably use more gas than I needed to in order to get this accomplished. But this will really be the last stainless I do until I build the... Uh, manifolds and turbo piping for the Bibster. So maybe by then I'll have another regulator, I don't know. I just don't do that much of it and the way that I have it set up works pretty good. You may have also noticed that in the footage I'm using Michael Furyk's new 
TIG cup. Anyway, the white one that I was using is the new FUPA 12 from Michael Furick, uh, Furick Cups. I'll put a link in the description, you can go check it out, but I'm gonna do a feature on that TIG cup soon. So, I featured the first FUPA, the clear ones, probably episode like five of You Need This Tool, and I'm gonna feature the newest one in a You Need This Tool video too, so uh, you'll get to see it there soon. All right guys, that's all I got for you today. Should have some footage up soon of the new shop. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. Gonna actually show everything on the channel. So moving in, building some of the new benches and stuff that we're gonna put in there, organizing it, all that stuff should be on the channel. So just stay tuned for that. October 1st is the official date. I'm still waiting on the owner of the building to clean up a little bit and fix a couple little things. So soon, should be soon, you should see some stuff. As always, thank you for joining me. I will see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.